Okay, Victor Momo from Excel Moments here, and this is the second part of video on text splits, a bug, a limitation, the workaround. Okay, so what's the problem? I have touched on this in the first video, but I want to make the two videos independent of themselves. I will link the first video up here, but I want you to be able to watch this one and still understand it without watching the first. But let me explain the problem and then you know what I'm doing in this video. You have a couple of names here. Okay, uh, this is from a previous test. So let me just take this out. Oh no, we need an end there. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. So now you want to split these names into multiple, you know, columns, more like text to columns, right? But using formulas. So you use a text split. So you can do a text split and say you want to split this name here using a space. Okay. Now you do that. You know, you can take this down right and everything looks like it's fine well the only thing well which will not be an issue for some people but maybe for some of us is that we always want our formulas now to sit in you know one cell which is the top left most cell and spill into multiple rows and multiple columns and not have to drag things down like i did okay so you're like well victor that's simple you had a2 there why not just include the other you know cells in that range make it a2 to a10 this should solve the problem. So you do enter, you have a spill error, you're like, well, that's good. So you take out the obstructing cells and you see that your spill is just sitting in one column. It's not able to then create, you know, the multiple columns for you like you would want. You change it back, you know, from A2 to A10 to just A2. Now you have it spill into multiple columns. But once you try to, you know, extend it to multiple rows, it's not able to do that. So it's a problem of creating a 2D array right and whenever you start off with either a column vector or a row vector meaning that you're starting off with in this case one column and you want it to expand into multi rows multiple columns right you need to think of two functions the make array function and the reduce function both of them are lambda helper functions so they are there to help you the first video i showed how to use make array to solve the problem and in this one i want to show how to use you know reduce okay to solve it maybe it may be you know nice to have just something quick you know on the reduce okay but maybe we start off again i like to start off with you know scan and then show you um how the reduce works or yeah so let me let me quickly do that but that's not what the video is about so if you wanted to find a running total for this for example what i mean by running total is this is going to be one okay and here you want this to be right i think that's how to do a running total and you can take this down Okay, so we want to do a running total. So 1 plus 2, 3, 3 plus 3, 6. You could use the scan function so that you can have it in one cell and it spills. Because, you know, right now I have them as, you know, distinct cells, right? As you can see, they're distinct. Okay, but if I wanted to have it in one cell and have it, you know, spill that way and a running total, I could use the scan function. Scan will give me the individual elements of whatever calculation I'm doing. So I can do scan. I can start off my initial value at zero so that, you know, the first value is going to be zero plus, in that case, one, which will obviously be one that I want and, you know, and go on and, and so on and so forth. So I do zero. I take my array to be everything in here. All right. And then I go to the lambda part where I have, you know, two variables, A and B. A is an accumulator which starts off using the first value. So it means A will start off as zero. Okay. Now, by the time you do your calculation, my calculation, I want my calculation to be A plus B. So B is every element in that array. So this is what it means. A will start off with the initial value, which is zero, right? B will start off with the first value in the array, which is one. So it's going to be zero plus one, right? That will be one. That's the first value. So that value of one now will become the new A. So by the time you're coming in again, you're doing A plus B. Yes, A has changed to one. B has also changed. B is no more the first element in the array. It has done that already. B is going to become 2. It's not going to be 1 plus 2, 3. So 3 is your new A. By the time you are coming in the next time, your A is now 3. Your B will no longer be 2. Your B will now be 3. And so on. So, well, let's see how it works. Close the brackets here. Close the brackets here. So you can see that we have the same thing. So it's giving you individual elements. At every step of the calculation, it's showing you the answers. That's what the scan will do. But if you need just the last answer, you can just use the reduce function. So if you just change the scan to reduce without changing anything, right? You can see that you have the last answer, which is really the sum of everything. So that's the same concept we are going to use here. You know, we are going to be doing like a stack. 
we want to stack all these elements together. That's break them down using the text split and stack them up. It's very simple. If you think about it, if you start off with A and you know you stack B, you have A B. By the time you're coming here, okay, or let me say you have you know A B, right? By the time you're coming here and you stack it with C, you know, or the next time you have A B C. By the time you come and stack it with the next one, you have A B C D. You have A B C D E and so on. But the truth is that you don't need this individual, you know, tables. What you need is just the final stack, which is just saying reduce. Just give me the last one that has after you've stacked everything. A B C D. That's kind of you know the simple way I want to explain it without trying to go you know in depth and to save <laughs> you know the time of the video. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the reduce. The first thing is, what's the initial value of the reduce? Let's assume I don't know. You know, there are two ways to solve this problem, assuming you don't know, or also assuming you know. But let's assume I don't know. And I say, I don't know. So just make it blank. Okay. Now, what's your array? This is my array here. All these elements. Yeah, this is my array. So I will want it to loop through each of them one after the other. Then I go into the lambda portion, doing something similar to what I did just now, A and B. So A is going to start off with, you know, this blank value. That's the first thing. But what do I want A to do? I want to stack, you know, A, meaning the first value, I want to stack it with the next. And then after that, I stack everything with the next, with the next. But now I'm going to do a V stack. So meaning I'm going to stack A. But am I just stacking A with B? If I stack A with B, I'm going to come up with exactly the same values that I have here. B, don't forget, is every element within the array. Okay? So B will start off with this money that pretty and parkour. But what we need from it is not just the money that pretty and parkour. We need it to be split into columns. So it means I will do a text split. Okay? And I will split that B. Because B in this case for the first element will be that money that pretty and parkour. I'll split it just like we started off with a space. Okay? So it means it's going to stack the first thing because A is starting off with an initial value of blank. So it means the first thing is it's going to put a blank and then the next value underneath it is going to be the split of this name. When it gets that answer, it will go again and stack that, you know, with when it splits when macaroni. At the end of the day, the reduce will just give us the final answer, which means when all of them are stacked. It takes a while to understand, but once you get it, honestly, you do get it. So that's V stack. We close the V stack, we close the lambda, we close the reduce. Okay, so now you see, and that's the reason why we have this redundant first row, because we said start off with a blank. So that first row is that blank row, which, you know, is not needed. So what we do is we just drop it. Okay, so that's the first problem. So we drop it and we've solved it. We've solved the first problem, which is drop, sorry, <laughs> one, which is the number of rows. Okay, so we've dropped it. The only other thing we now have is the hash NA, right? And where does the hash NA occur? That occurs when, you know, you can see it has maybe three names. So it thinks in its head like, mm, this is supposed to be three, three, three. Now these guys don't have third names. What do I do? So in that case, I would just say put an if NA in my mind. And say for the if na, you know, right? Okay, and now this works fine. So if somebody happens to have more than maybe two names or three names or four names, let me say Alpha Sule, you know, Olude, Bio Clinton. Okay, so you can see that now the array expands. It gives us five columns now, just because there is a name there that has you know five. They say, yeah, row that has five names. So it needs to create five columns. If I take out the Clinton, for example, then you will see that that is going to shrink. Let's see what it looks like now. Look at the boundaries. You can see it's now into four columns. So the reduce is, you know, really very elegant at solving this problem. But just know that it's beyond this particular problem. This is just an application of the reduce function. It can be used in a lot of instances. But I decided to show this, you know, for the text splits. And I used the make array in the first video and I decided to use the reduce in, the, in this video. So whenever you have a situation where you have maybe a column vector, one column or one row, and, you know, your calculation requires that it spills and creates a 2D array, meaning from one row or one column, you want to create multiple rows, multiple columns. Think of those two functions, make array and reduce the coming very handy. So I hope, you know, you like this video. If you do like it, please um, hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel for Excel Moments. For now, I'm out.